All right, welcome back. We're on to the second lesson of this unit where we're talking about two-dimensional kinematics. Um, this lesson is all about something called the independence of perpendicular vectors. What that means is when we have two vectors, and they could be any vectors here, we could be talking about velocities like we're going to talk about today, or in the future, you might be talking about accelerations or forces or momenta or whatever it is. When we've got vectors that are perpendicular to each other, they are independent, which means they do not affect one another. Um, we'll take an example here. We've got, um, after escaping from a maximum security stockade, the A-team is trying to travel north across a river in a speedboat. Uh, the boat can travel at 25 meters per second in still water, which means if there's no river flow at all, no current, then the boat can go 25 meters per second in whatever direction they point it. But there's a river that is flowing to the east uh, at 11 meters per second. So I'm just going to kind of take my picture here and I'm just going to write in a bunch of this information. So the river here is 350 meters wide. So that's like the distance across the river. And I've got the boat, the speed boat, is able to travel at a velocity of, uh, let's see, I'm going to call that V boat. And that goes at 25 meters per second. And they're pointing that due north. But then at the same time, I've got this river, uh, and the river is kind of flowing, and we can see the river flows this way uh, to the east with a velocity of 11 meters per second. So the first thing I want you to think about is just recognize what's going to happen here. So the boat points itself due north, the river is flowing to the east. Even though the, point of the boat's <laughs> traveling to the north, it's going to get pulled off course. What's really going to happen here is the boat's going to get kind of pulled off course over in this direction here. It's going to it's going to travel north but get pulled to the east, and it's going to head off kind of a northeast kind of direction. Okay. So the first question here is what is the total resultant velocity? I just want to point that out. You may not have heard that term before. Resultant is a term we use when we add up vectors and find the total overall or the result of all the individual vectors. So uh, in order to find that. As you can imagine, this is going to involve some vector addition. So I'm going to take the first uh, velocity here, which is the velocity of the boat. So V boat is this way at 25 meters per second. And I'm going to add to that another vector, which is to the east, and that's the velocity of the river, V river, and that is 11 meters per second to the east. And so if I think about the way I've done vector addition before, I, I start at the start and I go to the end using that tip to tail method. So my overall velocity is kind of pointing northeast. And so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to label that VR for resultant or VT for V total. doesn't matter, whatever you like. Now we can see here that these vectors are perpendicular. What do you know? So one's north, one's east. This means this is a right angle triangle. And so I can use Pythagoras to solve for the resultant velocity. So I could say something like V resultant squared is equal to V boat squared plus V river squared. Or V resultant is equal to the square root of uh, V boat squared plus V river squared, which is equal to the square root of 25 squared plus 11 squared, which uh, ends up being, when I do my calculations, when I round it off to a couple of sig figs, that's about 27 meters per second. Now, it would be tempting to put a box around that, give myself a high five and call it a day, but I need to remember that I just, I need to find the velocity. And what I found technically was the resultant speed. I found out how fast the boat was traveling. But if I want the velocity, I have to give both the speed and the direction. And it would be tempting to look at this and say, well, you know, like to the northeast. But again, northeast, that's a huge range, right? There's north, there's east, anywhere in between that's northeast. So I need to be even more specific. And the best way to be even more specific is to give an exact angle. So I'm going to give this angle right here from my starting position. What is that angle away from north? And so um, I might just tuck it in here. I could do uh, tan of theta is going to equal 11 over 25, or theta equals inverse tan of 11 over 25. And it's a little bit squished in there. But um, this ends up being about 24 degrees east 
of north. And so really my answer includes all of that information there, both how fast I'm moving and the exact direction. Okay, so part two of this question asks, okay, how long does it take to cross the river? And here's where things get just a little bit trickier because um, I know that the boat's traveling at a constant velocity. So I know that uh, I can just use good old handy dandy velocity equals displacement over time. And that's really the only formula I can use in this case because it's moving at a constant velocity. But it's not quite obvious what velocity I should use. Um, I've got the velocity of the boat, I've got the velocity of the river, and I've got the total resultant velocity. So that's why I need to kind of break down what's happening here. Um, we can see that the boat, when it travels, it travels this distance, or this displacement right here. Now that displacement is due north. While it's traveling north, it's also being pulled to the east. So it also ends up, not end up here, but also ends up getting pulled off course some displacement that way. So I've got another displacement over here. And I'm going to bring you back to the title of this, uh, of this lesson, which is the independence of perpendicular vectors, which is to say that those two things are independent from each other. The velocity of the boat north and the velocity of the river east are not going to affect one each other. And, it, and as weird as it is to think, if the river were to all of a sudden start flowing twice as quickly, it wouldn't change how long it takes the boat to go across the river because the velocity of the boat is to the north and the distance across the river is also to the north. Now, if the river were to speed up, what would change would be that the, the boat would get pulled more off course, but the time to cross wouldn't change. So I need to actually, I need to clarify my picture here a little bit because um, this is gonna be, um, this needs some more information. This V boat, this across the river uh, velocity, I'm gonna call this, Vy, because that's my velocity in the y direction. And V river, that's really Vx. And those two things are independent. And so when I look here at this displacement, this um, 350 meters to the north, this displacement is dy. And this displacement over here is dx. And again, x and y, perpendicular vectors, are going to be independent. So long story short, if I know that I need to travel 350 meters in the northern direction and I'm going 25 meters per second, then I can just say that Vy equals dy divided by time. And in that case, when I solve here, time equals dy divided by Vy, which is 350 meters divided by 25 meters per second. And that ends up being right around 14 seconds. So again, I can't stress this enough, the speed of the river doesn't matter. If the river were to suddenly stop flowing and V river dropped to zero, the boat would still take 14 seconds to cross because that's how fast it's going to the north and that's how far it has to go to the north. Now the last question here, how far down river do they end up? That's really a question of what is dx? So just like I could say Vy equals dy over t, I can also say that Vx equals dx over t. And so dx equals vx times t. Now just before I go ahead and plug the numbers and solve, it's worth just thinking about this for a second. I'm going to let you figure this out for yourself. But I'm bothering to label vy and dy, but I'm not labeling t. And I'm labeling vx and dx, but again, I'm not labeling t. What is it about v and d that means I have to define x or y, which direction it's in, but t I'm just leaving as t. So I'll let you think about that yourselves. Now, in the meantime, the velocity in the x direction, that is the velocity of the river. That's about 11 meters per second. And the time it takes to drift down the river is the same as the time that it takes to cross the river. So that's going to be the 14 seconds that I found up above there. And so again, when I solve this, just rounding off to sig figs, I got about 150 meters. And you could specify 150 meters to the east. Or if you leave it as positive, then I think we know you mean down the river, okay? So, a couple just reminders here, a couple things to keep in mind. Perpendicular vectors are independent. I think I've said that about nine times already. But it's super important to keep in mind. To find the uh, total resultant vector, we add each vector. 
And remember that we have to do vector addition. So in this case, because it was two dimensions, we had to use Pythagoras and trigonometry and all that fun stuff. Now don't forget that each resultant vector uh, has a direction. And that direction, when we're in two dimensions, you have to now use an angle. You can't just say plus or minus, we have to use the angle. Um, and so we don't use plus or minus uh, for direction in two dimension. And that's just because plus and minus is, is too simple. It works in one dimension because you can go this way or that way. But in two dimensions, there's literally infinite different directions you can go. So we need to be more specific. Okay, so let's try another, um, just another twist on this example, okay? Now in this case, uh, the law has caught on to the boys and is wading down river on the other side. So down here, okay, it looks like the police have figured out what's going on and they're waiting. They're waiting for them to drift down river, right? Um, maybe you could imagine there's like a giant waterfall here, right? And so they can't, they can't afford to drift down river, river. But the boat itself still travels at a maximum speed in still water of 25 meters per second. So if the, if the river's flowing to the east, instead of just pointing north and drifting off, well, they could kind of point the boat kind of up river. They could like fight the current a little bit and then get pulled back a little bit, but maybe overall they can make it across river. So if they kind of fight this way and they point the boat like that, so now V-boat is this way, and that is uh, 25 meters per second. The river is still going to pull them back. Can't avoid that, right? The river is still going this way. And that's 11 meters per second. Now, I want you to notice a couple things here. In this new example, you could imagine if I point straight north, I get pulled off course. If I point right up the river, I'm going to go that way. There must be some perfect angle I could point at, so I end up making a direct crossing. If I choose just the right direction, or just the right heading, as we call it, I could cross directly. Now the way that works is, I have to point the boat uh, this way, and I'm going to redraw this vector uh, addition. So I'm going to point the boat this way, okay, and then when I add the velocity of the river, Okay, I'm going to add that vector on here. You can see that the resultant, or the total, is pointing due north. So now I have this northern resultant looks like this. And that's my new resultant. Now a couple of things about this, this diagram I want you to realize is, it sure looks like it's the exact same picture that I drew before. It looks a lot like this previous vector addition. I've got the same vectors, V-boat, V-river, V-r. Check this down here. Yep, the same vectors are involved. And so it's tempting to think that, well, it's just the same angle because it just flipped over the other way. But if you look closely at these two diagrams, you'll recognize that they're actually not the same triangle. Even though the individual, um, I've labeled the individual uh, vectors the same, they're not quite the same triangle. And again, I'll let you think about why that is. One thing that is true though, is it is still a right angle triangle. Um, what I want you to notice, maybe one little clue, is that V river, I could still call this VX. But V boat is not VY. In fact, Vy is now my resultant. The total overall is now what's headed to the north. So I want to figure out the heading, which means I want to figure out that angle right there. Okay. So uh, I can find that angle by, in this case, using sine, uh, because the sine of theta is going to equal V river over V boat, uh, which means theta is in equal the inverse sine of v river over v boat, which gives me the inverse sine of um, 11 over 25, which is right around, um, right around 26 degrees. You might call that 26 degrees west of north. Now you'll notice that that was uh, similar, I think before we got about 24 degrees, so it's a similar answer, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, so they point their boat 26 degrees up river, and then they'll end up going straight across. But the follow-up question is, okay, well now how long is it going to take to cross that heading? And we're going to find that answer in a second here. Remember this, this river is still the same river. Somehow they're crossing it again. So uh, dy is still 350 meters. Um, I want you to just think about 
how this is going to work. Last time we found that it took them 14 seconds to cross the river. When they point their boat upriver, should it take more, less, or the same amount of time? Think about that as we, as we work through and solve it. It is true that um, we can use the same equation before, V equals D over T, because again, the boat is moving at a constant velocity. And I know that the across the river distance is dy, so I'm going to use vy. Which means, to solve for my time, the time is just going to be dy divided by vy. Well, recognize that vy is now this resultant um, from this picture here. And I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to find that. So the resultant velocity, I'm going to use Pythagoras. And I'm going to uh, just say basically v boat squared equals v resultant squared plus v river squared. Because v resultant is not the hypotenuse, it's one of the sides. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. vr equals v boat squared minus v river squared. I'm just going to skip a couple algebra steps because I think probably you can keep up with that. And then um, plugging in and solving 25 squared minus 11 squared gives me again right around 22 and a half, 22.45 meters per second, which is slower than before. And so when I plug this in over here, I get 350 divided by 20, whoops, 22.45, which ends up being right around 16 seconds. So you can see that this time uh, it took a little bit longer. And again, why did it take longer? Well, I guess because some of the velocity of the boat had to be used to fight against the velocity of the river in order to make it directly across. If I want to just point straight across, I'll get there faster, but I'll get pulled off course. Okay, that is it for the second lesson on 2D kinematics.